Hello, my name is Simon and I am a PhD student at the Applied Ecology Department at North Carolina State University. Bumblebees pollinate important crops like blueberries, tomatoes, strawberries and many other crops. They are so important for pollination that some companies raise them and then sell them to farmers to pollinate the crops. However, when raising bumblebees in a commercial scale, the prevalence of some diseases increase. And then, when we move these colonies to the field, these commercial colonies can spread the diseases to wild bumblebees in the area. But what are those diseases anyway? There are a number of diseases that affect bumblebees. Uh, the two most common ones in North America are Crithidia bombi, which is a trypanosome. It makes bees lethargic, um, they have a hard time flying. The parasites are transmitted typically on flowers. So a bee will poop on a flower, um, another bee will step in it, and then become infected through the grooming process. They can also transmit the parasite within the colony itself. And so once they're in the colony, if they poop within the colony, or again through the grooming process, they might um, end up infecting their nest mates within the colony. So my first question was, how fast is it going to spread to the nest mates? And does that depend on the initial number of infected workers? To answer this question, I got several bumblebee colonies. In one group of colonies, I infected one worker per colony. In another group, I infected 10 workers per colony. After taking the desired number of workers from each colony, I gave them a sugar solution that contained the pathogen. The bees drink it, and then we put them back in their colonies. To sample bees, we use red light, because bees can't see it, so they don't fly out of the colony when we open it. We sample bees twice per week, and each time we sample 10% of the population in each colony. Unfortunately, we have to kill the bees we sample, so first we anesthesiate them with CO2. Insects in general are really sensitive to CO2. First, we crop the heads. And then we take the guts. This is where the critidia cells are. Critidia is an intestinal parasite that takes nutrients from the bee intestines. Also, critidia only infect insects, so there is no risk that we are going to get infected with it. To be able to see the critidia cells, we have to grind the intestines in a tube with water. So now the critidia cells are free in the water, so we can count how many of them were inside each bee. After that, we have to wait 4 hours for the sample to settle. Then, we look at the samples under the microscope, and we count how many Critidia cells are there. In that way, we can estimate whether the bee was sick, and if so, how sick it was. Those little blue dots moving around, those are the Critidia cells. After following the spread of Critidia inside the colonies for several weeks, I found that Critidia spread much faster in colonies where I infected 10 workers, compared to colonies where I infected 1 worker. This is what we were expecting to see, and it is important for management purposes because now we know that there is a tolerance level and colonies can stand getting a few individuals infected.